Welcome back to the Shritecast. My name is Andrew Krauthemmel, and uh, today we are going to go over some basic routing in a sonic wall. This is something that comes up from time to time uh, in medium and enterprise environments that have sonic walls in place. Uh, so they might have a, let's say, MPLS connection that they just leased out from their ISP between two locations and they want certain traffic for, for that one network to go over the MPLS router and then we have everyone else go out uh, the sonic wall for their internet access uh, and maybe to VPNs or something else that are built. Um, how would you do that in a sonic wall? So this is something that comes up uh, relatively often for me uh, that I figured I would share with you. So how to add routing functionality in a sonic wall. You can do that under the network routing location. Uh, a lot of people don't realize this, but it does have standard routing functionality, just like uh, you would in a real basic Cisco router. We have some basic static route policy functionality as well as some dynamic routing protocol functionality up the top there. You see that there's a RIP advertised and it can do some other protocols as well. Uh, so at the bottom we have our uh, automatically created route policies that the SonicWall knows about. So these are for our directly connected interfaces um, if you're in Cisco world, the, these would be basically your routes that show up as a C in your route uh, route table. Uh, these are automatically generated by the firewall. So if we want to create our own route entry, our own static route, we go ahead and click Add. And here we have our little screen of how to make a standard static route. Uh, you have an option of source. So in the sonic wall we can specify uh, if they're coming from the following host, if they're coming from the following range of IPs or this network uh, or anything else like that you can you can specify that and say if they're coming from here then go this direction. In a real basic network if you have like one LAN uh, and nothing too crazy going on in your sonic wall you can leave it as any because it'll match your LAN traffic, it'll, it'll match anything else going uh, people coming in from SSL VPN connections, anything like that, that that goes through the routing engine in the sonic wall will match with an any. Uh, if you have more complicated setup with like five different interfaces with a bunch of different networks and things like that, well then you might want to specify sources and destinations and say if you're coming in on X2 uh, with the following network uh, subnet, well then you might you want to go out X5 to this subnet, things like that. Uh, you can specify that. So here I'm going to leave it as any my destination is going to be my destination network, my destination subnet. So if I am, uh, let's say I have two, uh, I have a sonic wall here with a, an MPLS router on the network and I'm trying, uh, and the network available through that MPLS connection is 192.168.5.0 slash 24. That's going to be on the other side. Uh, that's where you would specify that in the destination. So that's your destination network essentially. Uh, as I said, you can make it other things like a host or whatever else you want. Uh, the Sonic was all object oriented, so you can base your objects off of uh, any criteria you really want. But here we could select our destination network. So I'll just choose something. I'm on the live demo box, so obviously I'm not going to be able to save anything, but we'll just go through it. Uh, services. You can also break it down based on the type of service. So what ports are used, what services are used, you can make routes based on that, which is very nice. Uh, that gives you functionality that's not found in basic Cisco routers and things like that. If you go through CCNA, you learn how to make static routes. Uh, they don't go through you know, how you can do it based on service. So this is a, a nice feature. Uh, most of the time, you'll leave it as any, though, because you'll you don't care what service they're using, you just want all traffic going to this network, go over here and talk to the MPLS router. So in this example we'll also leave it as any. Your gateway is going to be that router that you need to send your traffic to. So if I'm trying to get to 192.168.5.0 uh, and they need to talk to 192.168.168.2 I'll have an object created here which I'll select as my gateway uh, for 192.168.168.2 and then that'll be my MPLS router uh, all traffic goes to him so I'll just choose something else actually it would make more sense if I did that 
uh, and then you also select an outbound interface. So similarly, if you are used to Cisco and you say IP route, uh, the following subnet and mask, and then you get to specify an outbound interface or next hop IP address, uh, this is a, the same idea. You get to specify your outbound interface. So here we would choose uh, the interface for that MPLS router. So in a basic setup, I'd have that MPLS router on my LAN uh, as uh, the same subnet as the LAN of the sonic wall, so it would end up going out my X0. I just want to point people to a different router. You can make the metric uh, as you wish. Lower is better. Give it a comment. Then you have some options here for uh, disabling the route if the interface is disconnected. So if someone unplugs the interface, take the route out of the table, or else you know you'll send your packets to oblivion. That's something nice to have on uh, automatically. You can do some acceleration things. You can do probing, which uh, this comes into uh, play. The probing when you want to do a uh, tunnel interface uh, VPN connection, which I'll go over sometime in the future. Uh, besides the standard VPN connections, you can create tunnel interfaces and then route entries to those tunnel interfaces and probe across them and determine if they're up or down. And then you can use a VPN tunnel as pr primary and then a static route entry as a secondary and you can do all sorts of fun crazy things like that. Uh, that's where the probing comes into play. Uh, so here we have basically a static route ready to go. If I clicked OK it would show up there uh, underneath these grayed out selections and we would have a route saying anyone going to this fictional subnet would go out to my quote MPLS router go out my normal XO interface because he's on my LAN as well uh, and then all the traffic would route out there and since it's metric one it would take priority over everything else. And that's pretty much it for adding a static route. Uh, you can remember you can change it to the different interfaces so if you're trying to merge networks you can have them uh, set up on like X1 or something or sorry not X1 <laughs> X2 3 4 whatever other interfaces you have on your sonic wall and you can have the routes go from one interface to another uh, and you can get very specific with that but if you have a, a situation where you have a need for a subnet uh, to be accessed through your sonic wall but not necessarily through a VPN configured on your sonic wall uh, that would be how you do it and uh, that would be it for tonight sorry for the short video uh, we will continue with some other fun things in sonic walls next Wednesday uh, if you enjoy the videos come check out my blog at andrewkrathammel.com and strikeTools.com, which is a managed uh, security provider for small and medium businesses I will see you next Wednesday